Hello and welcome to Rock the Casbah Block 7. This block is a really simple block. It has two pieces of applique and the biggest trauma that we have is just coming around and trimming that applique simply. Um, we've got then the second piece of applique here and what I love though is this chain link satin stitch design that we've got going around the block. Now the block has actually been created it is not supposed to be a perfect circle so don't think that it is. I wanted something that was almost um, a little more squarish that was going to come off this block. The quilting that comes with this one is called Snail's Trail and as well as the um, custom quilting for the block you get the quilt as a sep the quilting as a separate block by itself and you also get the continuous quilting which is great for any borders that you might want to do for projects. Okay let's get started. So to begin with I've got my poly mesh stabilizer and I've got my embroiderer's felt. I'm threading my needle with wash away thread which you can get off our website and stitching colorway one which is going to do a basting stitch all around our block. Then we're going to come through with a pair of sharp scissors and trim the excess embroiderer's felt from around this block and what that's going to do is just assist us in avoiding any of the excess um, bulk in our seams. We use the wash away thread so that when we join the blocks together the threads are able to just come away. Once we've done this I'm going to take my 100% cotton fabric, lay it on top of the block and I've pressed that fabric, lay it on top of the block and come through and stitch colourway two, still with the wash away thread which is going to hold the fabric onto the stabiliser and embroiderer's felt. and you can see that's all stitching nicely. If you feel the need to you can smooth this down with your hand as you go along. Just make sure as you do it that you don't impede the movement of the hoop. And now I'm up to colorway three. So I'm going to thread my machine with the deep pink thread and I want to stitch colorway three which is going to show us exactly where we are going to place our applique fabric. At the same time you're going to want to press your applique fabric with a warm iron just to make sure it's got no buckles mm -hmm. in it. And here we are at the end and I'm now going and I move my hoop forward just to help with placement. I'm going to place the fabric over that applique shape and where the embroidery design goes to the edge of the block I want to leave a somewhere between a quarter and a half um, inch or between half and one centimeter of excess fabric there and I'm going to stitch colorway four which is going to hold that fabric down and in place. Now love this design it is a bit of a bugger to cut out and that's just because of all of the curves in it. So I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine excuse my arm and with my really sharp squeezy scissors and sorry you just can't quite see the edge of the hoop there I'm going to come through and lay the hoop on a flat surface and trim away all of that excess fabric. You want that block to be quite closely 
stitched and you can see I've left the fabric in what will be the joining area of the block. We're now going to come through and stitch colorway 5 which is going to do the satin stitch around the applique. Uh, now you may notice that my machine is actually stitching quite fast. I've sped this up in real life. I stitch on about five to six hundred stitches a minute. I'm using an 1175 needle and for the entire quilt project I used about three or four needles. Um, the other thing to note with the applique is as per all of my applique designs I've done this so that it has not only the beautiful sexy satin stitch but it also has a triple stitch outlining that satin just to give it a beautiful finish. And we're coming around. Um, so it's actually going to go around um, three or four times by the time you look at the underlay, the satin and then two outlines. I love this block because it looks very French to me. Excuse me while I just fix my thread there. Um, there's just something, yes, very, um, very French in, um, and I'm thinking vases in this block. And got to trim up as I go. I'm a horror for trimming. Um, as much as I tell you not to trim um, while the machine's running. I am a demon for doing the exact thing I don't tell you and because of that over time I've broken needles and scissors um, and I just can't break myself of the habit. So now we're coming and doing our outline stitching. While the machine's busy doing a lot of this stitching it's a great time to also prep your backing fabric and make sure that's all pressed down nicely and your wadding. Uh, now the thread that I choose to use is polyester embroidery thread. I just find that that gives the nicest um, working for my particular machine. What you choose to work with of course is totally up to you. And now I'm going to come through and change to my light to medium teal colour thread and I'm going to stitch colourway 6 which is going to do this satin chain link design and I really like this design I think it just gives um, and you'll see I've used it in many of the blocks that we go through um, I just love the satiny look of it um, and the simplicity of it at the same time now you don't have to use the same colors as I mix and match it up however you would like as you can see I'm doing the nine inch block here if you were if you are doing um, a smaller block but you still want to make a larger quilt just repeat the blocks however do it in different colors so instead of say having the pink in the middle I would do another block with the dark teal in the middle and the um, the deep pink as my chain link. So one of the things that I do like about these this quilt design is it has so many opportunities for you and things that you can do. And we're almost finished with our chain link around here and so I'm going to get ready my um, wine coloured thread. And I want to hoop my machine, oh sorry, thread my machine. Gotta love the auto threader. And I'm going to stitch colorway 7, which is going to show me where to put my applique fabric down to do the small circle applique in the corner. Colorway 8 is going to hold that down. Then I'll trim away. And colorway 9 is going to come through and satin stitch around that applique object. Now in real life this block took about an hour 20 
to create which is surprising given that it is one of the more simpler blocks but there is a lot of um, satin stitching on it okay so now we've done all the stitching stitching and I'm going to thread up with my wash away thread again and I want to remove the hoop from the machine and I'm going to take my wadding and place my wadding on top of you can see my wadding there in my backing I just want to place my wadding on top of um, the back of the project I'm then going to stitch colorway 10 which is going to hold the wadding down and then we want to trim away all of that excess wadding I'm then going to lay the backing fabric onto the quilt return it to the hoop and stitch out colorway 11 still with the wash away thread to secure the backing fabric to the project now when it comes to quilting your project you can choose what thread you want to quilt with I have chosen to quilt with um, embroiderous thread on top so just polyester embroidery thread and um, bobbin fill on the bottom I found that was strong and simple enough um, if you want to use 100% cottons you are most able it really is up to you and then we are going to stitch colorway 12 which is going to create all of the quilting on our blocks and this quilting is called snails trail and it's a little bit more open than some of the other quilting designs that we've used over time um, but it's just got a beautiful curve to it that I love now what you will find with the snails trail design and because it's custom quilting that we're doing on each block there will just be one or two small places where you have a jump stitch that is because of the way the digitizer calibrates um, the shapes that it's working with and all we need to do is trim those away as we go through the blocks and we're coming through and almost completed our quilting and then we'll take a look at the finished blocks so this is one of the larger blocks in the collection and we need to repeat this block four times and here is the four blocks put together and I'm about to show you the tutorial on how to put those blocks together you will notice it's not with this block um, but it works exactly the same way so I do hope you have enjoyed this project I hope you will join us for more blocks um, as we go through as always if you've got any questions please let me know at sales at juliehalldesigns.com until next time bye okay so let's look at how we are going to trim these blocks up here is my block and all I've done is I've come through and I've trimmed away all of the excess stabilizer so now I have my wadding underneath and the only um, fabric or anything that you can see is my 100% cotton fabric on top these overstitch pieces and my backing fabric now I just want to come through and show you the reason that we use the wash away thread so this is my block here and what you can see is back when we first tacked down our embroiderers felt and our 
sorry I'm losing my mind here and probably a better way to show that is with this bit our embroiderers felt in our cotton this was the stitching line that we created because of all the stitching that we then put on the block when we came to putting the wadding and the backing on this is the new stitching line and this is why we use wash away thread because both of these lines are going to come out so we won't actually see either of these and it's the new stitching line that you want to use as your trimming guide and I'm now going to come through and using that trimming guide of the outside edge I'm going to trim one inch all the way around. Now, some of my seams here are only just going to get that inch. That's okay. It is much more important that we have the inch on the back. One, two, three, four, than it is on the front. Don't worry about the fact that you can see that selvage there. That is all going to disappear as we put the block together. And so that is our trimmed block. And now I'm going to go through and do the same to the other four blocks that are going to match this super block okay so here I have my four blocks all trimmed and I'm going to work on two of these blocks at a time so all I'm going to do is come through and line up our seam line and stitch as close if not just inside that seam line as we can I'm going to use 100% white cotton thread and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've now joined up both of those pieces together and what I've done is I've come through and I'm just going to press our seam flat to one side. Once I've done that, I'm going to take these three pieces of fabric. So I'm leaving the top piece here. I'm going to take these three pieces and trim to about a quarter of an inch. And that is going to take all of that bulk out of the seam for us. You can see there, I'm trimming away that excess applique fabric as well. I'm just going to turn that around so that I can get a better handle on it. Then I'm going to come through and we are going to fold over that remaining inch of fabric so that there's no exposed seam. And again, I'm going to press that, mainly just because pressing solves most of life's issues. Now, at this stage, you can choose to come through and hand stitch that together, or you can grab your double-sided 
no heat basting tape and attach that to the block And once that's attached, pull off the backing and turn it over, which will also secure that seam. Now, once I've done this, while you don't need heat, I love the extra security that heat does give me. So I come through and I apply a little bit of heat just to fully set that seam. Now, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the other side. However, what I wanna do is make sure that in this case, my seam is going to sit to the opposite side so that I can then lock those seams together and not have too much bulk in the finished project. I'll come back once I've completed this side. And now that both sections of this block have been joined together, I'm going to come through and stitch along the bottom there and repeat the process. I'll come back once this has been stitched. Okay. So I've joined that next seam together. So now I have all four blocks as one and I'm coming through and I'm trimming away the excess fabric. Now it's made a little bit more difficult with the joining of the last of the four simply because we've got fabric here within our seams. So just come through and trim the bulk of that away as best you can. And now I'm just going to do a final press. And then come through. Now, as I was saying before, this is not an incredibly bulky seam, simply because we've taken that through on each side. So half the bulk is there and half is there. As I said before, you can hand stitch this if you would like. Either way is absolutely fine. And I'm going to come through, run my line of basting tape. Just working half at a time, come through, I will fold that down And then press it with my iron. Now one of the tricks is to then leave this flat 
until the fabric cools down and the glue ergo dries. And you'll get a much better overall finish. So I'm going to leave that for a minute and I'll come back and show you how I get rid of the last of the wash away thread. Okay, and the final step that we are going to do here is to get rid of these excess stitching lines. And remember, we've done these with wash away thread. So all I need to do and I've got my towel here that I've just dipped in water. And you can see that those threads are disappearing. Now I'm not taking them away from the outside here simply because we've got to join other blocks to this. But you can see just how well the wash away thread then comes out of those seams. leaving a perfect block. Okay, so that is how you are going to put your blocks together. When it comes to, and that was a stitch that was actually left in there, when it comes to putting individual blocks together, I would then join, for instance, block there and block there across here before I join them along this way. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, send them to me at sales at Julie Hall Designs um, or just ask on one of our Facebook groups. Until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.